Hello and welcome to this part 2 tutorial video for Medieval Dynasty. If you've just started the game and you've not yet seen my top 5 tips video, then check that out in the link in the description below for some really great advice as to things that might help you starting out. Today I'll be explaining everything you need to know to ensure that your village not only survives the harsh winters, but prospers happily instead of being taxed into oblivion and despair. I'm going to go over the general mechanics of tax, hiring and allocating workers, setting production levels, farming and resources, and then follow that with an overview of each of the main settlement buildings that I've managed to unlock so far. So firstly, tax. The key thing to keep in mind here is that every building you create adds to your spring tax bill. Starting out, you'll have a capped number of buildings as well that you can create, and that will rise as the game progresses and your dynasty builds. It also takes a lot of time and effort to encourage villagers to join your settlement, so you're going to only have a few villagers to work with for quite a period of time. So there's really no value in creating a building that will sit empty, costing you tax, plus the time and resources that it took you to build it in the beginning. You might think you're saving money by building, say, a smith to avoid spending hundreds of gold to buy a scythe, but by the time you add up the blueprint cost to unlock that item, the cost of the time and materials you spent building the building and then the item, and the tax each year until you actually get not only your iron extraction industry up and running, but then get to employ a blacksmith to make these tools, you're probably far better off just to have bought the item initially for that higher one-off cost from a vendor. Having said that, remember also that your relationship with merchants affects their prices, so be sure to chat them up each time before you buy, you buy or sell to and prioritize the merchants that you develop a good relationship with. So in my opinion, your first things as a village that you must have are the two resource buildings, a woodshed, and a hunter's lodge. Once you have those buildings capped out with staff, then look at expanding further. Don't waste time and money on something that you won't or can't utilize at this point. And in some ways you can look at things in my video as a way of what not to do, because this is how I found that out. Topic number two, hiring staff. As with the merchants, you can talk to hireable staff in towns. They're the ones with a little person icon above them in the inspector view. When you say the line about wanting people to join your village, it will tell you the current approval level or the renown of your dynasty that you need to be able to hire someone. So chat them up, you trying to make good choices about the options, and if you reach that approval level, you can ask them to join you. Their preference for answers will depend on their job, it appears, but also be changeable by factors like the weather. If it's raining and you say it's nice weather, well, some people will comment that they like the rain, and others might complain about getting wet, which will slip your approval backwards. The important thing to remember is that staff will not join you unless they have a house available, so make sure you've got enough housing built. Men will occupy occupy other houses with other single men and vice versa for females. So you don't need a house per employee, you just need enough free beds for that particular gender. Once you've hired at least one staff member, you can then use the management screen to control what they'll do in your village. The list on the left hand side shows the staff you've hired along with their current job and skill levels. Try and match them to make use of their talents. They're the same skills that you have with your own character. The building tab shows you all of the buildings in your settlement, and the field tab allows you to see what we planted in each field type, and the animal tab shows you your animals. Note that you can't purchase animals from towns if you don't have at least one of the required animal housing for that type. Clicking on a worker and selecting F opens their information screen, which allows you to set the house they live in and their working location. If you click on the location that they work, you can then choose a new location, not the one they currently work at, which is a bit annoying for places that have more than one job. It then lets you choose from the range of jobs at that location for the person to undertake. If you go into the building tab and select a building and click F, it will let you see the goods being produced if there's a worker at that building who's doing something. And for some of them, if possible, you can change the focus of the building um, outputs amongst the possible products. So things like um, crafting buildings so that you can tell them to produce more of this thing and less of this one. A few tips on farming. There are two farming jobs, the field worker and the farmer. 
field workers are the ones that you want to start out with. They spread out manure to fertilize the fields, they hoe them, and then they plant the seeds. The farmers harvest the crops and process products like grains inside the barn. Field workers, however, do take a long time to get anything done, and they won't move on to the next job until they finish the first one. So if you make a massive field, they'll spread manure over the entire field before they try and hoe it, and then they'll try and seed it, which can end up crossing over multiple seasons. It appears that the fields only appear to hold the, the fertilizer for so long before they revert back to being barren, and you have to start the whole process again. So you could actually put all that time and effort into fertilizing the field and never get around to anything planted and then have to start all over again. Also, apparently, if you try and help by following the worker around with a hoe and doing the hoeing after they put the fertilizer down, it can bug their behavior and break it. So just be aware of that, apparently. I'm sure that will probably get fixed in the long run. So in my opinion, it's better to have smaller fields, get them fertilized and planted and growing, than having one that is so large it actually doesn't get anything growing at all. It just stays barren the whole time. Field workers will also only plant seeds that are compatible with the time of the season too. So if your workers are just standing there, that could be one reason why. And resources. There are two essential buildings other than houses, and these are the two resource buildings, which I'll talk about in the next part. Currently in the game, workers do not need to get supplies to perform their jobs. However, it is intended in development that you'll have to keep supplying the tools that they will need to do that job. Or in the case of farming, hoes, manure, seeds that you want planted. This will add more complexity to the game and potentially push farming viability even later in the game, I believe. The description talks about putting items into their specific building chest. However, since all workers can magically add to and withdraw from the village resources and food stores, I'm not sure how this will be changed over time. So now I'm going to look at the key buildings and talk about the role of each, the jobs that go with the buildings, and the considerations you might want to make if you're ready for this building. Firstly, let's just talk quickly about houses. As I mentioned earlier, everyone in your settlement needs somewhere to live in the form of a house. There are three levels of houses you can eventually unlock, and of course people will be happier living in fancier houses. You can also change some elements of houses, such as when you're building, you can change the walls and the roof by choosing a different option during the construction, and it will have different resource requirements. Or, you can use your hammer to upgrade elements of a house after the fact, and you also can use the hammer to demolish buildings that you don't want anymore. The essential buildings, the storage buildings. There are two essential buildings that every village must have aside from houses. These are the resource storage and the food storage. Any items that your villagers gather go into one of these two storage buildings and conversely all of their needs for food and wood have to come out of these storage buildings. The buildings feature a job that you can assign villagers to called the storekeeper but I don't know that this is currently active as it doesn't appear to have any function at this time. I predict that this function will possibly be a villager who will travel between various buildings and bring materials back to the central location and vice versa distributing goods, or maybe a way to perhaps buy and sell goods that your uh, village is lacking or does or has excess of. Harvesting. The woodshed, the excavation shed and the mine. There are three harvesting buildings and they're focused on gathering wood, obviously from the woodshed, uh, stone, salt, limestone and iron from the excavation shed and um, clay and the mine. The jobs available are the lumberjack, the miner and the clay digger. Uh, clay digger. I've not built a mine yet but from the description it appears that mines can be expanded and dug deeper over time by workers so that might be an additional job there. The key thing to remember with these is that they need to be built in a specific place. The mine needs to be built at a mine entrance and there are existing caves around the uh, map that you can go to, but watch out for bears because some of them are guarded by bears. The woodshed and the excavation shed need to be near the resource that you want to gather, so either near a rock face or clay deposit or in the middle of the wood. The hunting lodge. The hunting lodge offers crafting benches to create a bow and arrow, but you can also craft these from the workshop building as well. The two job types that are on offer are the hunter, who brings in raw meat, which 
just be aware, must be cooked before your villagers can consume it, and the gatherer who brings in berries and mushrooms and other such things. There's also a fishing hut that you can build, but I haven't built one of these yet, and I expect there will be a role of a fisherman similar to the hunter role associated with that building. Farming. Fields. Fields can be drawn out and created to make a rectangular size and shape that you wish, and you can demolish them using the building hammer if you want to get rid of them. Using the field tab of the management menu, you can choose what crops you want to have planted in the fields. However, the workforce to do this is not assigned to the field themselves, but across all your fields by setting the workers to the barn and choosing field worker. The barn. The barn offers several important features. Firstly, it's the base of operations for the two job options, the field workers for fertilising and ploughing fields and planting crops, and for farmers who harvest the crops and refine the products in the barn, such as wheat to make straw and flour. The barn contains three work areas, a threshing floor, a grindstone and a workbench, along with a chest for worker supplies. Animal houses. There are a range of animal houses in the game, one for each animal type that you can obtain, and you can't purchase animals of that type if you don't have a house ready for them to go into. The job associated with these houses is animal husbandry, and it involves looking after and breeding your animal flock or herd. To feed your animals, you need to make animal feed, which is created in the barn. Now onto the crafting buildings. These buildings generally are ones that allow you to create new or advanced items or equipment. However, they do require resources to, uh, to create those items quite often. And this is where you have to question whether you have enough of an industry set up to be able to support the resources that you're going to need to put someone in there uh, to make it worthwhile having this uh, industry uh, working in your village at this point. Or whether you're better off just going out to one of the merchants that sells this item straight off and buying them from them. You will find the villages around the map that each village has one usually of these specific items in there, um, the, so the specific industries. So there's one town that has a smithy, there's one town that has a tavern, there's one town that has a sewing station, so that you can go and buy these items as one-offs if you don't have the building in your village. The first one is the workshop. I recommend building the workshop because it's a valuable building that allows you to un make many unlocked blueprints. Um, and the role for the person there is called the craftsman. The sewing workshop has three stations. There's a spinning wheel to create thread from either flax or from um, wool, if you end up getting sheep. A loom to create fabric and a table to create finished clothing. And that look, clothing can also be made from leather. Um, by itself. So if you have a lot of uh, leather coming in through having a hunter, you could create some things like gloves and that sort of stuff in this building, even if you don't have access to the other materials. The job here is called the seamster. The smithy. The smithy contains a forge, a workstation for creating wooden or stone tools, which is pretty much the uh, same as the workshop, and an anvil, which is the one that you're really interested in, which allows you to create the metal tools and metal weapons. The villager role here is also called the craftsman. And lastly, we have the tavern. The tavern gives your villagers somewhere to hang out at the end of the working day. You'll often find them coming and sitting in here. And there's a fire that you can use to cook food or raw meat. And the job available here is called the innkeeper. So in general, my advice is don't do what I did and build everything as soon as you unlock it. It's a great way to see what all the buildings look like and what's in them. But not only will you waste your time and resources building things that you can't really use, you'll also face a really high tax bill that will hold your village back because you'll have to spend your energy making quick money to pay the tax bill instead of investing your time in getting new people and getting on with growing your settlement in a sustainable way. I hope you found this overview useful. If you have any questions or your own tips to share, please drop us a line in the comments below and, and let us know. And remember to subscribe for more of my gaming videos. Thanks again for watching.